Welcome to part 5 of my Introduction to Filmmaking Techniques video series, which will be all about creating emphasis. For other videos in the series, like the prequel to this video that explores framing and composition, make sure to check out the links in the description below. Emphasis is essentially a visual strategy that aims to attract, direct, and or control the viewer's attention. The idea is to create a focal point or an eye-catching part of the composition that is not only distinct from the rest of the frame, but also has the most significance. So you make <laughs> yeah. Here are 10 different techniques that you can use, often in combination with each other, to either create and or manipulate the emphasis of your shots. <laughs> Number one, using the center. One of the easiest ways to direct the viewer's attention is by simply centering the subject in the frame since our natural tendency is to look in the middle first. When you place a subject or subjects in the center, they naturally become the single key point of interest, making other subjects seem less important. Unlike when you scatter multiple subjects throughout the frame, for example, as this suggests that the viewer should maybe pay equal attention to all of them. Consistently keeping the focus in the center is also an effective way to orient or guide the audience's attention during fast cutting action sequences as well like director George Hill did for Mad Max Fury Road. Keeping the action in the same place means the viewer doesn't need to search the screen for each point of interest after every cut, no matter how fast the cuts are, as the focus is always in the center. Number two, leading lines, which are basically natural lines or elements within the environment that help draw the viewer's eye to your subject or focal point. These lines subconsciously create a path that directs the audience's attention to where they should be looking in the frame, or maybe even to let us know where a subject is either going or coming from. But while it is probably most common to use environmental elements, leading lines can also be created with limbs of subjects, like arms or even legs, with directed objects, like a pool cue, a sword, or an angled ship, and even through repetition of objects, like this example from Inception. Number three, one point perspective. To me, a one point or single point perspective shot is essentially leading lines on steroids or when all the horizontal lines in your frame converge into a single vanishing point, usually at the center, but depending on your project's composition, it can be elsewhere in the frame as well. One point perspective is often used to showcase an environment or world of perfect order and balance by absorbing the audience into the narrowing dimension of the shot. Get over here! Next up, we have frame within a frame, or framing in, which is a new frame created by dividing or breaking up the composition of your shot, highlighting, or putting more emphasis on a specific area or moment of your story for maximum impact. This is not only an effective way to draw attention to a particular focal point, but it can also add depth, context, and a greater sense of location to a shot as well. And in some cases, the frame within the frame might even be considered just as important to the composition as the view through it, meaning it would carry equal weight to the rest of the shot, i.e. to your main subject. Uh, hey, howdy. Hey there. Foreground framing, which is probably the most common type, is created by strategically placing foreground elements between the camera and the subject. This typically means using things like doorways, windows, and other structural features present within the environment, but you can also frame in your shot by using the other subjects in your scene, nature itself like rocks or trees, mirrors and other reflective surfaces, maybe some blurry foreground elements, or even just a creative opening through an interesting object. Background framing, which is a much more subtle technique, is when you frame in your subject with something that already exists in the background of the scene, like a geometric design, an interesting physical object, or maybe a window or another man-made frame that is positioned behind the subject, like this example from Westworld. A negative times a negative equals a positive. Say it. Number five is isolation or unusual emphasis, which is a composition that uses negative space to contrast or engulf the subject instead of distracting from it. When used properly, the negative space 
makes the characters stand out against their surroundings, and is obviously a great way to depict isolation or loneliness, while still giving attention to the environment of the scene. Unusual emphasis means that an element stands out simply because it is different or seemingly doesn't fit within the environment, like a spherical spacecraft amongst a natural landscape. Wilson! Wilson! The sixth way to direct the viewer's attention is by adjusting your shot size, or how much of the frame your subject occupies. Basically, the larger your subject is in the frame and or the closer they are to the camera, the more prominent they feel to the audience. Plus, it's easier to focus on a subject when they're the only thing in the shot. On the other end of the spectrum, when a character is smaller or further away, they become less significant and harder to draw attention to, as now the environment is more prominent. I mean, unless you use other techniques like negative space or one-point perspective. Having said that, a wide shot is effective if you want the viewer's eye to wander throughout the frame, or if you need them to acknowledge more than one subject. For more about the impact of shot size, check out the link in the description below. What? No, I don't want to do that. Number seven, depth of field, or the range of distance within which all objects will be an acceptable sharp focus. A deep depth of field is often used to keep everything in the image sharp and clear, from the foreground to the background, which is good for landscapes, crowd shots, or to help establish your character in the world that you've placed them in. A shallow depth of field, on the other hand, refers to a small area in focus, where often the subject is in focus while the background is blurred. This is obviously a great way to isolate the viewer's attention on the exact element or detail that you want them to see at that particular moment. A shallow depth of field achieves this by separating the subject from all other distractions in the surrounding environment. But just so you know, you can also get creative with shallow depth of field by focusing on an adjacent object, leaving the main subject out of focus. This creates a conflict of interest for the viewer. You can also shift the point of focus from one spot to another within a single shot, which is known as a focal pull or rack focus, like this example from Gangs of New York. Number eight is color, or more specifically, how the value or contrast of color is used to create the focal point of a shot, where loud, bright, or dramatic color contrasts will make the viewer's eye jump to where you want them to look, and softer shifts in color will allow the audience to move more leisurely through the frame. Creating emphasis with color is often achieved by using complementary colors, or colors that sit across from each other on the color wheel, like red and green, blue and orange, or purple and yellow. Since complementary colors are as different in hue as possible, Placing them alongside one another is an effective way to attract the viewer's eyes to a focal point. Duh, yeah. This isn't the only way to use color for emphasis, however. You can also have a high contrast in value, and you can also use an isolated color, whether it's a color found in only one spot, or a single color in an otherwise colorless shot, as both techniques help a subject stand out because they don't harmonize with the rest of the composition's color palette. Probably the most famous example of this is the girl in red from the Schindler's List. Another way to attract attention and make an element stand out is with light, or light in contrast with the absence of light or shadows. There was a shadow. When a subject is placed in an illuminated portion of the scene, like there's a spotlight shining on them, more emphasis is drawn to the subject which obviously helps to call attention to that part of the frame. This can be an effective way to highlight a specific detail, like a tear running down a subject's face, to showcase an element, an area, or an object that is important to the story, or even just to create dramatic tension between different portions of the frame. Basically, the greater the contrast between light and dark, the narrower the audience's focus will be. On the other end of the spectrum, we can also draw attention to the dark portions of the scene if we want, mostly in the form of silhouettes, as they are now the part of the shot that stands out. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. This contrast of a very dark shape against a brighter background is an aesthetically appealing method of engaging the audience because we normally don't get to see objects like this. 
Light is also often used to enhance or create other forms of emphasis, like frame within a frame, as well. This can be done in combination with traditional techniques of framing in, by using windows or doorways, for example, and can also obviously be both spotlighted, like this example from The Crown, or silhouettes, like this example from Punch Drunk Love. Any questions? No, not for me. The tenth and final method of creating emphasis in a composition is through movement. I don't get it. Whether it's a subject, the camera, or a combination of both, movement creates a sense of ebb and flow through the frame, which turns it from a passive image to a dynamic scene that takes the viewer on a path of discovery. As a result, when a character or object moves through the scene, we are naturally drawn to their energy, which is most apparent when everything else in the frame is still, or without energy. Movement can not only draw attention to the subject itself, but also to a specific detail or object in the frame as well. Like this example from Pulp Fiction, where we first notice the gun, next our eyes jump to his pocket, and then we follow the wallet up to his face. Movement is so effective that it can even override the parts of the frame that are in focus. But emphasis can also be generated from opposition by having a character move or travel in a different direction, against, or maybe perpendicular to everyone else, and from resistance, where now the subject is still and everything else is in motion around them. These techniques work because they essentially call attention to the most rebel element in the shot, just like unusual emphasis did. Whoa, I just got a flash of us together on a water slide. Now, emphasis can also be significantly impacted by camera movement as well, by either enhancing or changing what the audience is supposed to be looking at in a single shot. This might mean narrowing the focus of a shot by moving the camera into a subject, or maybe pulling back from one point of interest to something or someone else entirely. You can transfer or redirect the viewer's attention from one element to another with a simple pan or a tilt up or down, or you can keep the audience locked onto a subject with a tracking or trucking shot as they move through the scene, or maybe with an orbit shot that isolates the stationary subject from the rest of the movement created by the camera. And as mentioned earlier, central framing, when paired with movement or action, is a great way to control the point of focus as well. Like this example from Star Wars, where despite the subjects of focus changing several times, along with the camera position, the action always remains in the center, which makes it easy for us to follow. What have I done? Ow. In the end, whether you use lines, light, movement, and or other techniques to create emphasis, the primary goal of composition is to control how your story unfolds, and as a result, how your viewers will interact with your film, one frame at a time. If you got something out of this video, make sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.